The mainline Mario games have always been some of the best games I have played. Yet there is one where the public opinion is really mixed. And it happens to be my favorite of the bunch. Super Mario Sunshine. I can definitely say that the game has its flaws. But if we look past the flaws, there is an absolute masterpiece to be played. Let's go and dive into why I love Mario Sunshine. One thing that I really love about Super Mario Sunshine is the world. Overall, I just love it when games deliver a world that feels like a real and believable place. The entire game takes place in the tropical Isle Delfino, a big vacation spot. The places you visit all make Isle Delfino feel like such a real and believable place. I just love the geography of the island. In each level you can see the other levels in the background. Like from Pinna Park, where you can see Serena Beach, Rico Harbor, Bianco Hills, Delfino Plaza, and some of the palms from Pianta Village, all from one place. Each of the levels also elevate the feeling of Isle Delfino being a believable place that could exist in real life. Each level is based on something that would be present on a tropical island. There is the city of Delfino Plaza, two villages where the inhabitants of the island live, Bianco Hills and Pianta Village. Even though both levels have the same theme of being a village, they are still very distinct in their looks. Bianco Hills got this big lake and windmill, whereas Pianta Village focuses more on the mushroom and palms aesthetic. Every island obviously needs a harbor, that's where Rico Harbor comes into play. And we can't forget about beaches, that's one of the most important things for a tourist spot like Isle Delfino. There are actually quite a few of those. There is a small beach at Plaza Delfino, or the Gran Gelato Beach, or even the beaches outside Hotel Delfino and Pinna Park. Given that it's a tropical island after all, it really makes sense that there are so many beaches. I have already mentioned Pinna Park, a beautiful amusement park, perfect for this vacation paradise. As you can see, even though all the levels follow the same theme, they are all distinct and together form this beautiful world we get to explore in Super Mario Sunshine. Now then, let's dive deeper into how the levels themselves work. In each level, there are 8 missions with a shine sprite at the end. To complete the game, you need to beat the 7th mission in each level. One thing that is often criticized is that you have to do all missions in order and can't skip any that you don't like. Many compare it to Super Mario 64 where you only have to collect a certain number of stars and have the ability to do stars out of order in each level. I do see a benefit with doing it the way it was done in Super Mario Sunshine. Given that the player has to visit the same world a minimum of 7 times in a certain order, the developers had the opportunity to tell an overarching narrative in the worlds. The best example of this has to be Gelato Beach. When you first get to this level, you can see this tower housing the egg of the legendary sandbird. There are these mirrors reflecting light onto the tower to ensure that the sandbird can be born. In the second mission, some cataquacks have found their way onto the mirrors and caused them to rotate away and stopped heating the egg. To make matters even worse, a big wiggler has started sleeping on top of the tower. Mario needs to get rid of the cataquacks and save the egg of the sandbird which then results in the Wiggler falling off the tower. In the next episode, the Wiggler is wild and disrupting the peace of Gelato Beach. Mario needs to defeat the Wiggler to restore peace to the beach. When all that is done, the Sandbird is finally born. Another level that uses the storytelling is Serena Beach, with their ghost situation in the Hotel Delfino. Mario has to try multiple ways to get rid of the ghosts before finally reaching King Boo down below the casino. The last case of levels using the linear structure to tell a story is Noki Bay. When you first reach the beautiful Noki Bay, all the water is polluted. The Nokis cannot live their peaceful lifestyle when their homes have been ruined like this. Mario first tries to help them by unclogging the waterfall, but to no avail. The water is still polluted. Later on, the true source is revealed. An eel down in the underwater city, and that eel happens to have really bad teeth. After defeating the eel, the water is no longer polluted and the Noki can return to their homes. Sadly, the developers didn't always use the linear levels to their advantage by telling stories in a level. Sometimes the only difference is that there is less of Shadow Mario's paint like goo, which I would not consider a real story. It still does not change the fact that I really love all of Super Mario Sunshine's levels. They are all such fun places to visit. Let's get onward and talk about an aspect of the game that is heavily criticized, but where I can see the benefits of it existing. 
But before we do that, if you want to see more videos like this one, go ahead and splash that subscribe button. Many people dislike the blue coins, and I can really see why. Although I think that the concept of blue coins is perfect for the game, the execution was somewhat lacking in some aspects. Let's start with why I think they are great. The most important aspect of the blue coins is that they are an incentive to deeper explore the levels. They make you go out of the way and really take in the beautiful landscape of the level instead of just running straight to the objective. By doing so, this will naturally make the players see parts of the level they would never have seen otherwise. This does lead right into one of the worst aspects of the blue coins though. Many blue coins are locked behind a certain mission in a level. This basically forces the player to explore every nook and cranny of the level a total of 8 times for each of the levels. I think you can see why this is the most annoying and infuriating part of the blue coins. The only way to get around this issue would be to look up where they are online. But that ruins the fun of thoroughly exploring the level. Another issue is that some of the blue coins are just hidden in ridiculous ways. Like who would have thought that spraying this random wall would give a blue coin? Overall, if the blue coins weren't spread out over the missions and not hidden in unfair places, then they would have been an almost perfect addition to the game. I still do like them, but they also do annoy me to some degree. Let's go and talk about Mario himself. Mario feels very different in the way he controls in Super Mario Sunshine. The biggest change to his moves has to be Flood. Flood gives Mario the ability to hover in the air and correct many mistakes. I really like the ability to hover. Flood can also help in other ways, like spraying water in front of Mario. This is mainly used to clean the goo that's everywhere. Later in the game, you unlock two more nozzles for Flood, the rocket and turbo nozzle. Both are really cool concepts, but heavily underused in the game. There is that one level where you boost through with the turbo nozzle. I really like that one. Now, let's talk about Mario himself. The first thing you notice is how fast Mario is. Like you just slightly tap the stick in one direction and he directly sprints away. This is just something you need to get used to. I barely even think of it because that's how I've known Mario all my life. Many people were sad over the removal of the long jump. Given that the hover nozzle has a similar function, that being crossing larger gaps. I don't see that much of an issue with it being removed. I will however talk a bit more about the long jump in a later segment. One of Mario's new tricks is the spin jump. And my god is it strong. Like you can jump so far up in the air and cross really long distances. It might be a bit hard to do right at the start. But you do learn it relatively fast and once that happens it feels so rewarding to fly around with the spin jump. The last new move is the dive. It's just a short dive forward. It might not look like much, but it's really fun to just spam it. It can even be combined with some of Mario's other moves. If you spray some water in front of you and dive onto it, then Mario will just glide forward with extreme speed. Or if you use it in combination with the side flip, it kind of becomes a long jump with added height. Many criticize the controls and Mario's new moveset, but for me it's not an issue at all. This is what I grew up with, this is how I always knew Mario. But then I can't speak much, as I don't really like the movement in Super Mario 64. I guess which you prefer is just the one you grew up with. Let's move on to one of Sunshine's biggest weaknesses. Sadly, there are quite a bit of unpolished levels in the game. The best example for this has to be the pachinko machine. Mario has to go into this huge pachinko machine and collect red coins. The part that makes this so horrible is the invisible force that constantly keeps pushing Mario around. You have almost no control over Mario at all, as this force keeps pushing Mario to the right side. Even trying to ground pound to get straight down doesn't help, as the force just keeps pushing you away from where you want to go. And if you miss just slightly, you get dropped into the void down below. This level is just straight up unplayable. There are some other examples of unpolished levels, like the poison water lily pad ride, or the sandbird. Luckily, most of the levels aren't this bad. It's just a handful of painful levels that you have to beat if you want to 100% the game. If you just want to beat the game normally, you don't have to do the pachinko machine or the poison water lily pad ride. Now, after talking about this, I wanna quickly go ahead and talk about a really cool thing coming in the near future. 
I know this is a video about Super Mario Sunshine, but there is this really cool mod I need to talk about. Super Mario Eclipse has been in development for a long time, and is slated for a release this summer. I played a bit of the demo for this mod, and I gotta say, it's tons of fun. Let's look into what this mod adds. The mod upgrades Mario's moveset and adds back the long jump, and it's really fun to use. Even though it isn't necessarily required for the Sunshine gameplay, it's still a fun addition. The mod also adds two new characters, Luigi and Il Piantissimo. From the demo it seemed like Luigi is just a reskin for Mario, but Il Piantissimo is a bit different. Il Piantissimo is really fast and can use the double jump, as he doesn't have flood. Recently the trailer for the full version dropped, and I am surprised at just how big this mod is. There are many new levels and a total of 240 shine sprites. That's twice as much as in Super Mario Sunshine. Some of the levels are fully unique, some of them are taken from other Mario games, and then there are those that use beta content from Super Mario Sunshine. Personally, I think betas from big games are really interesting and I am so excited to visit the beta Plaza Delfino. Those were my thoughts on Super Mario Sunshine. Now I wanna hear your opinions. What do you guys think about Super Mario Sunshine? Please do tell me in the comments. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see ya in the next one.